White Wolf here at Ways of the Wild Institute in Vermont. And I thought I'd, uh, well, uh, the, like the last video that I uh, made, actually two videos ago, I guess, uh, I mentioned that I was going to be making some uh, short um, videos, kind of letting people know what's going on at the school, um, things that might not be uh, easily seen on the website, uh, especially um, different. Uh, handmade objects that, uh, that I make uh, for sale here at the Institute. Um, and so this is uh, one such video. And today what I'm going to do is uh, talk a little bit, um, just a, a short while, uh, about some of the uh, real Animal Claw necklaces um, that I make up here. And these necklaces, um, the reason I'm doing a, a video on them is simply because I have them on the store, uh, but not on the actual website. So you actually have to go through the website to the store to find them. Um, nonetheless, I also wanted to show um, a little bit uh, more detail about them and talk a little bit about them. Because uh, on the website, or on the store, um, I go ahead and, you know, lay out some details as to uh, what the necklaces are about, what they're made from, uh, what the purpose behind them is and whatnot. Um, I also have uh, many images uh, of numerous uh, real claw necklaces that I have made and shipped out all over the world uh, to people. Um, but I thought uh, a little video footage uh, to show them a little bit more up close, talk about some of the materials that I use and why I use those materials. Uh, might be beneficial, uh, help to uh, get rid of some uh, curiosity and perhaps some questions out there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, direct the camera here to uh, the table where I have uh, some uh, of the necklaces laid out and um, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about them. Okay, well first of all if you see a little gray streak go running by that's just a uh, just the little rabbit who lives here in the house. So uh, pay him no mind. He's very curious and he's got the free run of the house. Okay, um, so as you can see here, laid out on the table, uh, and I'll get some closer shots here as well. Um, I've got uh, a few of the uh, animal claw necklaces um, that I have uh, made. Uh, some of these, and I will get to the details of these in a minute, uh, some of these uh, have already been sold and are waiting to be shipped uh, and others are uh, for sale um, and there are some others here let's see yeah so that's about it I've got some here that are for sale uh, and some here that uh, have already been sold and are waiting to ship out but anyway like I discussed on the uh, the store page uh, my intention for making these uh, necklaces using real animal claws is because I believe in energy. Uh, my childhood native teacher, Michigalane, always talked deeply about the importance of energy and how everything in life has a specific and unique energy that is aligned with it. And we can learn to utilize these energies to help enhance the quality of our own life, to help us in self-healing, self-exploration, expansion. And so the animal frequencies, the animals, the four-legged and the winged ones, the ones who crawl here in our world, hold a very, very big position in our reality. Each animal contains a very specific and unique medicine or power energy as Native Americans have known about for thousands and thousands of years and these medicines that the animals carry the specific and unique energies that they possess contain very powerful, very potent lessons that can assist us all in life. Some of us align with very specific animals, while others align generally 
with many of the animals and they align more specifically with the plant realm or perhaps minerals. But for those who align with the animals, you can actually tap into the frequency of the animal, the energy of the animal, and use that energy to greatly assist you and guide you within the context of your earth walk. Now of course this can have to do with your totems, uh, which are your animal allies. However, not always, because we have the ability to tap into the frequency, the energy, of all animals. It doesn't have to be your totem. However, if you have an animal or a set of animals that you specifically align with in life, and I call them totems, then to possess something of that animal, to work with, to directly tap into the energy, can help greatly enhance your ability to find this energy that already exists within you, to help you learn from it, to help you grow with it. And so, animal claws placed in a necklace form is one such way of being able to obtain a piece of the animal that you align with, that you want to work with, and easily carry it with you. Now, of course, the animal claw necklaces hang in the heart chakra most of the time. Sometimes they are shorter ones, uh, and the energy, of course, goes around the throat chakra, and so really they directly affect uh, the heart chakra and the throat chakra, which, of course, is the emotional status of our being as well as our communicative abilities in life. Um, how well we present ourselves, and the emotional structure of our entire being and the integrity of self. And so the necklace format of carrying the energy I find to be extremely powerful. Now let's get a closer look at some of these because I want to show you some of the details uh, as to the materials I use. All right, like I said, these are real animal claws. This one here just happens to be an African lion. And the beads that I choose to use on the necklaces are, they're all very high energy materials. All right? I don't use plastics, don't use acrylics, any of that garbage. That doesn't hold a very conducive frequency to work with. I use real animal horn and bone. Uh, for instance, the black and white that you see here, these are uh, horn beads. And uh, the purple ones there, those are carved bone. Um, then you have, of course, the traditional Native American hair pipe beads, which are also bone. Um, I use glass beads as well. Um, and metal beads. Let's see if I can find one. Yes, this one here, of course, the uh, this is a uh, coyote tooth, and you have the amber or the uh, red horn uh, bone, bone beads there, the hair pipe beads. You also have uh, black horn beads that are carved into a spiral shape. I use copper, brass, uh, gold plate beads uh, that sit on a base metal. Uh, sometimes I'll use a copper base or a copper plate or a silver plate bead also. Um, and if we look up here at the grizzly claw, and this is from a North American grizzly, you'll notice, if I can focus in here without it getting too blurry, see that kind of grayish textured bead there? That's a granite bead. Uh, so are those white ones down there. Uh, they are made from real granite. So I do use a lot of stone beads as well. And over here we have a polar bear claw. Now the polar bear claw, obviously you can't get real polar bear claws. 
Um, but the polar bear claw is a replica, and when I use replica claws, and you can find the replica, replica, <laughs> replica claws, get tongue tied there, uh, you can find those on the website under this special uh, replica claw necklace uh, page. Uh, and I use only uh, high quality museum replica claws. So these are of the highest quality. Um, that's about as close as I can get. And you can see that that is indeed a very realistic looking claw. They are life size because they are cast from real claws. So this is a polar bear claw. Interestingly enough, I just made uh, a polar bear claw necklace for a soldier in Afghanistan who happens to have the polar bear as uh, his sigil. Then over here we have the tooth of a moose. And they are beautiful teeth. They have a nice elongated root and they have that nice textured spade tooth on the front. And remember, some people buy these claws because they simply want to explore an animal frequency that they have recently come into alignment with and others buy them because they happen to know that the animal itself is in fact their totem. I also have many people who buy these claw necklaces as gifts. This is a black bear claw. Um, of course it is standing on end. But you can see the size difference between the black bear claw and the grizzly claw there. And of course the polar bear claw. Quite the size difference. Now all the uh, claw necklaces that I make are single claw unless somebody specifies otherwise. One claw per necklace. On occasion, somebody will request necklaces with multiple claws, like these two for instance. And I do create, obviously, by looking here, necklaces with multiple claws or teeth, as can be seen in both these images. Um, but of course the price on the necklaces increase as the amount of claws on the necklace increase. So just keep that in mind if you're looking to order some of these. And uh, over here I use uh, semi-precious stones as well. Um, actually these here, these are a snowflake obsidian uh, mixed with uh, black horn. And this is a coyote tooth. So it's just another variety. So all the materials I use are very high quality, high energy materials. Nothing that's going to be fake or false. Nothing with low vibrational frequencies. Uh, of course the replica animal claws are casted from real claws and so they are not the real claws themselves. Um, so what I end up doing is I embed the frequency or the energy of that animal into the necklace itself. Now the reason I use replica claw um, claws for some of the necklaces um, for people who want them is because uh, a lot of people don't like the idea of having a real animal claw. Uh, which is absolutely fine, but they still want the energy of the animal uh, to carry with them, to work with. Um, and also, uh, a lot of the claws that uh, people are looking for, uh, you can't get real claws from, uh, because the species are endangered, um, there's lots of different reasons, uh, like the polar bear claw for instance. Uh, so again, um, a lot of the, uh, the raptors of course, I uh, make uh, Replica claw necklaces made from uh, owl, hawk, eagle, 
falcon. Uh, these are all replica claws because you can't possess the real claws of uh, the raptor family. Um, just for some examples. <clears throat> but what I end up doing, like I said, is I take the frequency of the animal, um, of the claw that I'm uh, making a necklace for, and I tap into that energy. And what I do is I align with that energy and I embed that frequency into the necklace itself. Also, the materials that I use to make the claw necklaces with, uh, the stone, the horn, the bone, the glass, the metal, um, all of this also possesses energy that can be combined to best suit specific animal frequencies. Okay? Um, everything in life is connected. It's a great way. Right? So everything has connections somewhere. And so by tapping into the frequency of a specific animal, you can also find uh, the materials, the natural materials that can best align with and enhance that animal frequency. But beyond this, um, normally what I do is I make necklaces specifically for individuals. All my necklaces are unique. There is no necklace that I have made that is identical to another. Uh, and the reason they are unique is because um, I take great, great pride in the craftsmanship uh, of my work. Second of all, I try to align the frequency of the necklace, the energy of the necklace, with the specific individual who the necklace is for. Uh, so, on the order form, when people order, they put their name, so I know who's buying it, where to send it. Um, what I do is I tap into the energy of their name, and then I design the necklace specifically for them. Um, and if they're asking for the necklace for a gift, uh, many times they will supply the name of the individual they're going to give a gift to. Uh, so again, I take that name and I tap into the energy and then I specifically create the necklace uh, to align with that individual who is to be the recipient. Uh, this makes the necklace and of course the wearing of the necklace so much more uh, potent uh, for the individual. Um, however, there are some times where I just create uh, some necklaces, like uh, a few here. Um, actually, I'll go back here and show you which ones uh, are sold and which ones are for sale. Um, where I'll just kind of create the necklace uh, because some people aren't concerned about having the energy aligned with them. They just want uh, a necklace of a specific animal. Um, and so I create them occasionally. Uh, I have the images and then people just say, well, I want that one. And that's fine too. These are just some examples. If you want to see uh, a wide variety uh, of the uh, images of the ones that I have already made, you'll have to go to my website, waysofthewildinstitute.com. Uh, click on the online store, follow the link, and then on the left-hand index, click on jewelry. And then a big page will come up with all the different types of necklaces. Uh, I've got the real animal claw necklaces. I've got the real bear claw necklaces. I've got the grizzly claw necklaces. Uh, I've got the lion, the African lion claw necklaces, and then I have the, um, uh, the replica animal claw necklaces. And all the, um, um, the variety of the real claw necklaces are found under just real claw necklaces. Uh, the bears and the lion, they have specific pages because of price differences. And once you go to those pages, there's many, many, many images uh, of the work that I have done. So you can scroll through there. Um, you can surf through those images, uh, you can enlarge them, and you can see um, the quality and the, the variety uh, of energy that I, I create using these necklaces. Okay, this African lion claw necklace here, this one uh, I just made yesterday actually, um, for a woman who ordered it, so this one is sold. Um, these two over here are also sold, as is the black bear, as is the grizzly bear. However, this polar bear claw necklace right here, which has the replica polar bear claw, it's got brass beads, uh, both round uh, and uh, conical. Uh, it's got a a short variety of uh, hair pipe bone bead 
uh, made from white-tailed deer. And then it's got the um, uh, the two-tone brown and uh, kind of white cream color. You can't really see the color here in the video. Um, that is also a that's a horn bead there. Uh, and then you've got the um, long black horn bead that is multi-shaded. It's got uh, orange flecks in it. Um, and then of course it's got uh, more brass, it's got uh, more of the short bone. And there it has the uh, amber horn bone. Uh, it's got red glass, black horn bone, uh, more amber horn bone. And the clasp is not made yet, as you can see. But this necklace is for sale, and you can find the polar bear claw necklaces on the replica claw necklace page. And the moose tooth, we've got the uh, tooth of a moose. This is a real tooth, and we have a circular silver bead, followed by two gold crust beads, uh, which are glass. And then you've got uh, the traditional native white hair pipe beads. We have, uh, let's see, the lavender glass beads. Uh, I believe we have copper beads. Yep, there's copper beads there. And of course the clasp is not finished on that one either. But that one is for sale under the real animal claw necklaces. This coyote tooth here, which we went over, has the snowflake obsidian. Uh, it's got brass beads and it has black horn. This necklace is for sale. And this coyote tooth right here, this is also for sale. It's got the red horn bone. It's got the black carved uh, horn bone. Uh, it's got uh, gold plate beads. It's got uh, brass beads. We have the uh, orange glass, traditional hair pipe bone and unfinished clasp so those four necklaces on the right side of the screen here are for sale uh, the clasps that I use are also very high quality clasps Let's see if I can get close to this one here it's going to be a little blurry but uh, this this is the traditional um, I don't even know what you call it it's, uh, like a toggle clasp. Um, this here is made from pewter and it is a carved pewter, uh, so it has a design in it. Um, it's very thin, but a very strong, lightweight clasp. And we also on the top of the grizzly claw here, we use high quality spring loaded beads with very strong magnets. Uh, there's two different types of magnets. These are really strong ones that I put on the heavier claws and on the lighter claws I put the lighter weight magnets. So for people who don't want to uh, fool with the, uh, the toggle in the back I use the magnet uh, type clasps. These are all strung on a, uh, a very tight wove, uh, we woven cotton cord. And uh, well, the one I'm wearing here, if I can get a close up without it blurring out, the one I'm wearing. Um, again, I do make different varieties depending on what the customer wants. Okay, now, um, question 
not many people, but occasionally somebody will come forward and ask, well, where are these claws coming from? And that's a very good question, and I'm glad people have asked this. I see. Pause. My dog is walking by. Um, I cross-check all my suppliers. Okay? I research my suppliers. Um, I communicate with them. I ask to see certificates. Um, I ask to find out where these claws are coming from. Okay? The real claws, obviously. Um, because I am very conscious as to um, uh, where the materials are coming from that I use. I don't want to uh, engage in any activity that creates um, harm that is unnecessary. Um, so the claws that I utilize and the teeth that I utilize uh, come from suppliers who get them from um, like the grizzly claws for instance uh, and the lion claws. Okay? These are not taken from live animals today. All these claws in the grizzly and the lion, these are taken from uh, salvaged rugs. Okay? Um, and before I started researching this, I didn't realize how many of these rugs were out there. Um, my rabbit's attacking the plant over here. You can probably hear them making a ruckus in the background. They're cute, but they're no they can be noisy. Anyway. Uh, they take them from rugs that have been salvaged. Uh, people who are giving them up, uh, a lot of museums, they end up rotating rugs uh, and they remove the claws from these rugs um, because the claws are in really good, high quality shape. Uh, so these are where the lion claw necklace, or the lion claws come from and the grizzly claws. Many of the black bear claws actually come from uh, the rugs as well. Uh, some of the black bear claws uh, are uh, sold to the suppliers um, during uh, legal hunting season. Uh, so these are black bears who are being hunted for their meat. Um, and so the claws are sold off. Um, a lot of people who, um, who are selling these claws to the suppliers are very conscious. They try to utilize all the animal. Uh, they'll sell the hide, they'll sell the bones, they'll utilize the meat themselves, they'll sell the teeth. Um, <clears throat> the moose teeth, uh, most of the moose teeth that we get are from moose kills. Um, you know, if you go to places like uh, Alaska, there's signs on the highways, you know, informing you of how many moose have been killed on the highways, um, and also how many people who have uh, been severely injured from colliding with moose. Um, so, you know, the, um, the wildlife divisions, they don't like to waste this uh, material. Uh, these animals were killed. It is unfortunate. Nothing can be done about it. But since they have been taken, you may as well utilize the materials that the animal has left behind. All right? It is a way of honoring the animal. So the moose teeth, most of these, like I said, come from these, um, these kills and collisions. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, just uh, a brief overview that uh, I'm very conscious as to what suppliers I utilize, and I don't use suppliers that I do not know. I research them, I make sure I cross-check their certificates, and I make sure everything is in the legal boundaries. Some claws, um, and this is detailed on the website, like um, bear claws, for instance, um, not so much the lion claws, but mostly the bear claws, okay, um, cannot be sold everywhere. So you need to make sure to check your location, your country, your state, to make sure that um, you're allowed to possess okay, and have shipped in the type of claw that you want to order. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. That took a lot longer than I anticipated, but that's okay. Um, I am getting a new batch of replica claws in um, probably within the next week. Uh, I have uh, tiger claws, uh, jaguar claws, I believe I have hawk, red tail hawk claws, uh, I believe I have uh, bald eagle claws, um, I think I have a raven claw coming in, all replicas. Uh, once I create um, those necklaces, I'll make a 
a short film because this one details all the details and that one I'll just kind of make a short film to show you some varieties of the replica claws. So again, if you're interested in these claws, uh, it would be my honor to make you one uh, or make one for somebody you're giving uh, to as a gift. Um, just check out my website, waysofthewildinstitute.com. Go to the store on the left hand index, go to the jewelry. And from there, you can click on whichever one you're interested in, read down through. There's a lot of testimonials from people. There's images of many, many, many claw necklaces that I have made on there. Um, it also uh, goes into detail, uh, especially on the replica claw and the uh, real animal claw. Those are two general pages. Inside there, there's a list of all the different types of claws that you could order. Okay? that you would then put in the comment box upon order. If you have any questions about these, uh, go ahead and email me at firewolfways at gmail.com. Again, this is White Wolf here at Ways of the Wild Institute in Vermont, and I thank you for your time, I thank you for your watching, and I thank you for your support.